And Carol will get the let out for you again tonight at 8 here at New York's Classic Rock Q1043. It's 8.08. First week of the baseball season, 2008, and Jose Canseco is with us. His new book is Vindicated, which could have been called, See, I Told You So, (laughs) except that Rush Limbaugh already had a book with that title that sold about a gazillion copies over 10 years ago. So the title was already taken. But basically, that's the story of this book. This is the See, I Told You So book. Or the truth hurts, one of the two. Well, the truth does hurt, and I think that's one of the reasons why it was so difficult for so many people to believe so much of what you said in your first book. I know you were very frustrated. You talked very openly of your frustration in Vindicated right. at, how, at how your first book was received. And I think it's because people just don't want to believe certain things. Well, my first book almost didn't get published because these publishers could not believe that everything I had to say was the absolute truth. They were worried about legality, slanders, and so forth. And then, you know, HarperCollins, Judith Reagan took the risk and, and published the first book, which is the number one bestseller, and started realizing that, wow, you know, Jose Canseco hasn't gotten sued. Mm-hmm. And all these individuals who testified before, before Congress, specifically Rafael Perrin, who wagged his fingers that I've never used steroids, all of a sudden, a month, two months later, tested positive for steroids. Mm-hmm. So people started saying, wow. Well, maybe, the, maybe this book is truthful. Well, one of the things that I found fascinating about the book, and uh, you have never said that you know through personal knowledge anything about Roger Clemens' steroid use. Right. From personal knowledge. However, uh, you did mention Roger Clemens in your first book, but it was removed. Yes. And you could never find out why it was removed. Well, it was removed because the publishers didn't want anything that could be conceived as it, uh, an allegation that wasn't true. Right, but they allowed a lot of other similar allegations against other players to be published in the first But book. I had personal, personal direct information. For example, the players that were mentioned, I injected. Mm-hmm. But then Roger Clemens' name disappeared from the book. But then right. Roger Clemens' name disappeared from your 60 Minutes interview. Yes. With Mike Wallace. It just disappeared. Well, because we covered more the subject matter of the book juice. Mm -hmm. And then Roger Clemens disappeared from the ESPN Sports Center piece. Yes. So it was Roger Clemens was just this name that would just disappear. Which was supposed to be the lead. That was going to be the lead story. (laughs) On Sports Center. It was, but for some apparent reason, it never came to fruition. It just disappeared. But you have your theory. Um, well, my, my theory could be is that he knows very powerful people in very powerful places. and The without, top place. Well, yeah, but without any, any direct evidence, it's, it's very difficult to put, you know, the best picture of our era in that kind of mm-hmm. position. You see, Shelley still thinks that I'm a maniac and the last person in America who believes that Roger Clemens he didn't do steroids. Him. But that's because there's a six-year-old boy that lives inside of me that doesn't want to accept any other explanation. But I've got to tell you, the photos in the book Vindicated, the before and after photos right. of some of our They're startling. favorite players. I they mean, are. It, they are. It really expands the mind it's when like, you take a look at those think? photos. Right. And, you know, for example, I mentioned that in the book, I uh, introduced Alex Rodriguez to a well-known steroid dealer, but after that, I left the scene. I never knew what happened. But also, if you look at his weight increase within that period of time, it was about 30 pounds. You can kind of assume that something went on. Maybe Alex did use steroids, but... I have no direct information on it. No, but you stuck the needle in Mark McGuire's butt. Yes, I did. That was... Well, that's pretty direct. <laughs> that's you pretty know, direct. That, that's about, yeah. Right, that's about as direct as yeah. it gets. <laughs> Jose Canseco is with us, author of Vindicated here at Q1043. We'll- New York's classic rock, Q1043. It's John Fogarty's center field. And Jose Canseco is with us this morning here at the Q. Vindicated, big names, big liars, and the battle to save baseball. That's the name of the brand new book. Now... There's a, a, a bit of a sad story that, that you tell because you allege that um, your average journeyman professional Major League Baseball player, not just the big stars, felt pressure to enhance their bodies artificially because they were generally in fear of losing their jobs because – if you're competing against everybody else who's doing it, if you don't do it, you're going to be out of work and forgotten, and that's going to be the end of you. And if Major League Baseball is going to turn its back on the whole problem because people love home run hitters and that sells more tickets, then a ball player has the choice of going ahead and taking that shot in the butt or 
saying goodbye to his career, or at least that's how a lot of guys felt. That's how you felt. That's exactly how journeyman players around the league felt. Is basically, you know, get on the bandwagon and keep up with the Joneses, or else you're going to be out of a job. So, in a way, that may have put some pressure on some of these baseball players to use steroids and try to, you know, have great years and hang on as long as possible or acquire multi-year contracts. Um, The other issue was that back then, it wasn't illegal. There wasn't a big, big deal about using steroids. It was spoken about openly in, in, in clubhouses, so it wasn't that big of a of an issue as it is today. But, but did, you- did you ever, you know, as a parent, what I worry about is that you're a role model. Our baseball players, like it or not, you are role models. So what are you telling kids then if you're using? Let me ask you a question. Um, does anyone in your family smoke? Yes. Okay. Do you know that on the pack of cigarettes it says... This will kill you. This can kill you. Yes. People drink. You, do you realize how many deaths, direct deaths, are linked with tobacco and liquor every year? But, Hundreds of thousands. But this is telling kids that this is the way to get ahead in sports. There's a difference. Well, this is it, the way to achieve. No, it wasn't out there in the open where we were doing commercials and saying, you know, so-and-so is hitting so many home runs because he's using steroids. It wasn't like that. It was an underworld. Really, no one knew about it till I wrote this book, Juiced. Mm-hmm. And it was something that you wanted to expose. It's not necessarily Correct. something that you were in favor of. I wasn't although. endorsing it. I was exposing it. Right. There, there, there's a complete difference. Nowadays, uh, you know, TV endorses tobacco. Mm. They endorse liquor. Well, well it sounds, you know. And, some, it, and those two are killers. I mean, except for the fact that, you know, you've stuck a needle in Mark McGuire's butt. I mean, it sounds sometimes like your life is pretty dull and boring. You don't smoke. You don't drink. No, I don't. Uh, you don't Not a big party. You, you don't party no. around. You no. don't You don't stay out late at night. You pretty and much... And watch everything you eat. You're pretty... Yeah. Absolutely. You, yeah, you, yeah. Wa- you watch your diet. You work out. And you but at, ta- the, at the point you, in time, I was using steroids to become the best athlete in the world. Right. And you take care of your daughter. That's and, right. and you're getting to the point in life where you're preparing to open the door as her dates arrive to pick her up. And oh, to kill boy, them. are they going to yes, be intimidated? To kill them. To kill them. Absolutely <laughs> intimidate them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was wondering, there's a big difference between human growth hormone and steroids. Yes. And yes. in fact, Sylvester Stallone has out and out said, I think everyone over 40 should be using human growth hormone. This is good for you. I, I think people, in a sense, are ignorant because they kind of clump steroids and human growth hormones together. Right. And like you said, they're completely different chemicals and completely used for apparently different reasons. But it seems like the combination of both used properly with the proper supervision, if you have to use them, are incredible anti-aging products. Right. But it's still controversial because it, it could cause some side effects down the road like arthritis and, and much worse. With human, they think. With, with human growth hormone, can you direct the growth to one specific area if you want to? <laughs> I mean, I, I think know. Viagra does that. I don't know. Is that it's possible? Te- it's temporary growth. <laughs> uh, Jose Canseco, the book is vindicated. It's it's a fascinating read. It, it really is. is. It is. Big names, big liars, and the battle to save baseball. Thanks for taking the time to visit with us this morning here. Thank at